So have you heard of Collide? Because we hadn't. Nope. <laughs> I, <laughs> and for good fucking reason, apparently. I tag I tag I had never heard of this movie until it was on the list of movies that were playing tonight. <laughs> like three days ago. Like seriously, when I texted you about this movie, that was like five minutes after I found I, out about it. Yeah, I was like Dude, there's some movie I've never heard of called Collide that's coming out, and I like briefly told you what it was. Because normally in a situation like that, when I see, I've never fucking heard of this fucking movie. I just assume maybe it's a religious movie coming out. But then I saw the cast and the plot. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is just something that's getting dumped in theaters. Uh, also, I'm in a situation like this. I'm usually like. Is this just getting? Can we skip it? Yeah. Well, no, not 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 so much that because it's like, well, I saw Sleepless. I might as well see this. Like, not even that. Like, usually, whenever something just kind of sneaks up on me like this, I always wonder, like, is this just getting advertised on television a lot, or is it getting advertised in front of like internet videos a lot or something? Because I've seen that happen before, where I'll be talking about something and be like, I never fucking heard of this movie until two days ago. And then I'll get a lot of people saying like, oh, I've been seeing ads for this in front of videos for like a month or something like that. So I uh, regardless, never saw a fucking trailer for it in any of the several movies we see every week. No, no. It, it was a movie. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is, I don't, I don't really hate this movie, honestly. I don't, because, I don't hate it either. I, because I've of, seen worse. I've seen so much worse, and I kind of somewhat <laughs> appreciate what they were trying. They just uh, didn't succeed. Not really. Every now and then in this movie, I would be thinking like, well, oh, this part's kind of working for me. Like, this part's... I'm getting kind of caught up in this part. Yeah. But then someone would say something stupid or something really insultingly dumb would happen in this film. Um, look, this movie is... It's basically like if you decided to cross Need for Speed with that shitty Liam Hemsworth paranoia movie that came out a couple <laughs> years ago and decided to give it the Run Lola Run soundtrack. But you know what? I don't hate this movie because it is better than that paranoia movie. It's better than like fucking Getaway with uh, Ethan Hawke. Yeah. Um. In the action scenes in this movie, I can at least tell what's going on in them. Like, it's it's not... It doesn't look like a good day to die hard. It doesn't no, look yeah. like... It doesn't look like that fucking Resident Evil movie that Brian and I went to go see. There there are moments of style in this film. No, there, it is... It's one of those things where I'm watching it going, you know, this director isn't a bad director, but this no. script is fucking awful. Because you know why? It's co-written by the fucking guy who wrote Return of Xander Cage. Ugh. And both movies have a, a bit of douchebaggery in them. I swear Xander Cage's coat is also in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> both movies look like they smell equally as bad. <laughs> <laughs> the, my main problem with this movie is like for such a kind of you know, Xander Cage, you expect you're like, okay, this is going to be ridiculous and stupid. In this movie, the concept of it is, it's ridiculous, but it's fairly grounded for a movie like this. Mm. But it's just kind of like what, what keeps happening. It's just like, but but no, this guy would have like all of his ribs broken. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that would happen. The suspension of disbelief in this movie is stretched so fucking thin by just, it's like, oh yeah, he was a car thief. And they mention it <laughs> that briefly. And then suddenly there's these fucking driving action scenes where it's just like, was he a car thief or was he a Formula 51 driver? <laughs> I, you know what? Like, I, I, with, with the right material, like, I, 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 can, I can totally get behind yeah. something like that. I absolutely can. I have many times in a movie like this. What was, but a couple of things we're a little hard to grasp in this movie. One of which is when Nicholas Holt and Felicity Jones first meet each other in the movie, they say to each other, can you believe we're the only Americans here? And yeah. I'm in the audience like, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it, her American accent. Isn't great. No, and no, there's, not. there's, there's times where he slips a little bit too, but it's just kind of like, okay, you, the idea of having these two characters here is that, 
they don't really speak. The reason they're American is they don't speak the language. Why can't they both be British? The movie takes place in Germany. I mean. Yeah, why can't they both be British? I don't understand why they had to be American. I don't either, especially when the... It's Nicholas Holt and Felicity Jones. The movie already has a very Euro action movie feel yeah. to it. Like, it does. And because of that, there is some style. It's from the director of Welcome to the Punch. And th there is some style to this movie, to the point to where often in the chase scenes, I was like, this does remind me of something I, I, I maybe really would have liked when I was like 16 and it's 1997. Yeah. But I would have probably forgotten about it quick, because, like, this does kind of feel like a 20-year-old action movie, and honestly, it also feels like the kind of movie that was maybe made three years ago and is just now getting released. Um. That, that, too. <laughs> that, too. It's just, yeah, they, they stretch it. They mention these brief things, and then that becomes, like, this big reaching thing, and it's like, that's a little weird. No, yeah, yeah, exactly, because, like... A movie like, movies of this kind that really work, work for reasons beyond just their stylish, and yeah. they've got like a good techno beat to them. That's really about the only decent thing yeah. here, is just that everything else doesn't work. Because when you find out what their big plan was, their big plan in this movie basically rests on on them testing whether they're the luckiest people alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's just kind of like, listen, man, if you were smart enough to know that, like, because there's this, spoilers, not that it fucking matters for this, but at the end it turns out, like, Nicholas Holt had this master plan the entire time mm -hmm. where, like, you know, he's got this truck full of drugs that he's hidden. If you're smart enough to plan to have a decoy truck, mm -hmm. and you're smart enough to hide these drugs from these people this entire time, how'd you get caught in the fucking first place? Uh-huh. Like, honestly. Like, instead of just switching trucks, switch trucks completely! Mm -hmm. Put the drugs somewhere else. If you have time to do that shit, do it. <laughs> and, when, and when they got Anthony Hopkins arrested at the end, were you also thinking like me... He could easily get out of this. Oh, easily. Like, I was like, okay, so some guy stole my company's truck and put a bunch of drugs in it. That's his defense. And you know what? It probably fucking worked. Because a truck was stolen days earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, to jump back a second. Basically, the plot of this movie is that Nicholas Holt and Felicity Jones are a couple. It turns out she's dying and needs a liver transplant. Kidney. I mean, kidney. A kidney, sorry. Yeah. I leaned over to you and went, is this a prequel to Monster Calls? Like, what if it was, like, Toby Kebbell and not Nicholas Holt in this? Like, what What in the shit? <laughs> um, so, anyway, he uh, agrees to basically hijack this truck to help out this drug lord who is this Turkish madman played by Ben Kingsley, uh, this is basically just the setup for a series of car chases on the Autobahn. I mean, yeah. Uh, and the the competing drug mule who they're stealing all this shit from is Anthony Hopkins. So Anthony Hopkins and his men are basically just trying to kill Nicholas Holt through the rest of it, and he's trying to get this money uh, back to to Ben Kingsley's character. And every t this is another reason why this is so reminding me of something like that fucking paranoia movie with Liam Hemsworth is because that movie was also about some dumb fucking guy who gets caught up with these two older fucking millionaires and that movie it was Gary Oldman and Harrison Ford <laughs> and that was easily like the only d a funny part of that movie is that you had Gary Oldman and Harrison Ford and what they know is a piece of shit so they have scenes together where they're just fucking going over the top for no reason and that's Ben Kingsley and Anthony Hopkins in this movie. Who are both great in this movie. Honestly. Well yeah because they're fucking hamming it up left yeah. and right. Ben Kingsley in this movie feels less like a person that exists and more like 
is this that Trevor actor again from Iron Man 3? Yeah. And this is one of his other characters he's created? I like it when Ben Kingsley goes off the rails. I do, bit. too. And and Anthony Hopkins is intimidating as fuck for an old man in this. They get, But if there is something... There are things I really don't like about this movie. And, oh, and, and, yeah. And, and things... And, Things that just every time they would happen in the movie, it would just make me roll my eyes. One of them is that Anthony Hopkins' character, and he is having fun in this because he and Ben Kingsley know this is, they know exactly what yeah. kind of movie this is. But he is a character that feels like it's just written by a really cynical action movie writer because this character exists just to say villainous monologuing shit that makes no sense. Like, him calling up Nicholas Holt to go run piggy 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 yeah. or just suddenly he's going to monologue about Mozart for no reason <laughs> like that is Anthony Hopkins in this like yeah. he goes around monologuing about whatever crap he just thought of off the top of his head wearing a blue dolomite suit I loved that suit yeah he was pulling it off and uh, Ben Kingsley's character in this spends and it's like a lot of things in this movie where they kind of just remind you of better things you could be yeah. watching. Because throughout this whole movie, Ben Kingsley keeps calling Nicholas Holt Burt Reynolds. Yeah. And so I'm looking at it like, you know what? Yeah, if this was a 70s Halanito movie with Burt Reynolds, it'd be a lot better than this, honestly. No, yeah, that's the, the weird thing about this movie is for everything in it that's good, there's something in it that's just as bad. So it comes out feeling like middling, but at the same time, not good at the same uh -huh. time. Because it's just kind of like, okay, those two are great. I thought Nicholas Holt was fine in it. He's perfectly serviceable in this role. Fucking Felicity Jones, though. <laughs> I thought she showed more emotion here than in Rogue One. <laughs> I agree. This is this isn't a better movie, mind you. No. <laughs> when like, she had. The, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I don't. I don't know how to feel about her yet because I didn't hate her in Rogue One as much as you did. Mm -hmm. Like I saw that movie twice. I thought she was. She was okay. She mm -hmm. wasn't good she w certainly wasn't great i don't think she was terrible she was okay mm -hmm. in a monster calls i thought she was, she was really, great she was fantastic at night and this is just like who the fuck are you uh-huh in, in this it was she was just playing the role of action Girl. hero's girlfriend yeah. who's sick and gets kidnapped at one point yeah. and that's the role she's playing in this um it's like uh, the role that, you know, five to s seven years ago when played by Amy Smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but or Amber it would have been, it been yeah. a much... Amber Heard was in that Paranoia movie. She yeah. was the girl in that. But Amy Smart, at least, like... Well, at least that would mean it's Crank, which is a way better movie than this. But you know what I mean. Yeah, like I know what that you mean. type yeah. of role, you know? that That's her, and when... When she had the briefcase of money on the subway at the end, I was serious. Like, is this going to turn into Run Lola Run? <laughs> she doesn't have orange hair in this. She has, like, just shock blonde hair in the movie. Um, Which, and, and then that's the other thing, too, is uh, this movie was so, it's like, there's all these action scenes, but every time there'd be a car accident and it showed Nicholas Holt in the car, he'd have some weird flashback to some weird romantic Nicholas Sparks scene. And it's yeah. like... We get it. He loves <laughs> yeah, her. Yeah. Fucking stop it. Okay? Uh -huh. yeah, the part that I did kind of like with that was when it... You're right. It, it cuts back to that way too much. But when it got weird, when the car was toppling oh, over yeah, and he, he looked over, over, she was next to him and like the music started kicking in. When something like that was would happen, I'd be like... Okay, I, I'm kind of getting caught up in this now for really shallow reasons, but whatever. Like, at least it's stylish. Oh, and, and then, that, that scene was really stylish, but at the same time, why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, I don't know I don't know why this is here, but I, you know, I can tell what's going on in these scenes. Yeah. I can. This is the kind of movie that, if I were to watch this, if I were to rent this and watch it at home... I'd get caught up in it, and I would, I would have the same gripes about it. I'm sure, but I wouldn't. 
I would be like, okay, this is, this feels appropriately direct to video action movie. Right on. All right. That, that killed 90 minutes and I, I don't hate myself after watching yeah. it. And what? I'll never think of it again. What the fuck is this in the theater? Like, I don't know. Because this is a direct... Like, and it's... Just because it has a, a, you know, somewhat decent cast doesn't mean it's not direct-to-video. You, you know, direct-to-video movies happen with great casts all the time. Absolutely. No, totally. Um, look, look at the poster for this fucking movie. The like, poster for this is atrocious and doesn't reflect the movie at all. No, the poster for this movie makes it look like an asylum movie for one. It, uh, the poster for it looks seriously looks like was this made fifteen fucking years ago? Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, but the one I will give it an edge uh, over some action movies that I see that don't feel they, they, whether they're good or bad they don't feel direct to video necessarily like okay take a movie like Jason Bourne for instance a movie that I didn't care that much for I didn't come out of that movie thinking that should have gone direct to video or anything like that I was like no it's, it's a Paul Greengrass movie it's Matt Damon it's fine but you know what at least in this movie I can hands down tell what's going on way more than I can in no, in, in a movie I'm, like Jason Bourne. I'll at least give this that. Like, a movie that feels direct to video has better action in it than something like that. Or something like Resident Evil Final Chapter. Oh, or, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I had any problems with, like, the technical aspects of the filmmaking. Mm -hmm. It's just some of the ridiculous shit that happens in the script. Like, towards the end, where that s fucking German SWAT team is going into this bar... And they forgot to cover the exit. They forgot to cover the back door! <laughs> Why? They don't cover the back door so everyone gets out! Except for Ben Kingsley, who doesn't apparently want to. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. He wasn't trapped. He could have left, too. Mm-hmm. He was weighed down by his Xander Cage coat that he was wearing in that scene. And his gold guns. Ah, oh, man. This movie... Through, again, throughout the whole thing, it, it just kind of keeps reminding you of other movies that do things better. Where it's whether it's Run Lola Run, whether it's most Burt Reynolds mo car movies from the seventies, or the opening scene has Ben Kingsley sitting there watching a movie, watching Perfect with John Travolta, yeah. and I'm sitting there like, well, that movie's terrible, but you know what? Like, I kind of wish I was watching Perfect right now. <laughs> well, I don't. know. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Honestly, this. <laughs> this baby has better things yeah. about it than perfect does. <laughs> that was another... Oh, sorry. No, no. That was another weird thing, too. When we first meet Ben Kingsley, he's obsessed with John Travolta. Then for the rest of the movie, he's obsessed with Burt Reynolds. Yeah, and, and, and he's calling Nicholas Holt Burt Reynolds throughout the entire movie, who looks nothing like Burt Reynolds. I took that as, like, because it's a car movie... Because it's because yeah, if the, if this were made in the seventies, it'd be something like White Lightning, um, and it'd be it'd be it'd be a better movie because it would be significantly less douchey than this, <laughs> <laughs> and the and the stunt work would be amazing. True, true. <laughs> they have crazy ass Ned Beatty chasing him around. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> everything's better with Ned Beatty. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I this is uh, it's it's perfectly serviceable as a rental. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. I mean, it's, it's it's. I don't even know that I would go so far as to suggest it as a rental. It's just, I'd say this is a Netflix like bored at three in the afternoon. You got nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah, because it'll it'll fit that purpose. Yeah. It won't fit any other goddamn purpose no. you're looking for. <laughs> we were two of four people in that theater. Probably the only four people who've heard of this fucking movie in Springfield. Everyone else... This theater's actually fairly crowded. Everyone else is in there Flying watching. out of Genesis is the history. Yeah, there's something in there called, Is Genesis History? Some document. We've gotten a preview for it a few times. I've gotten more previews for that! Than fucking this. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Hell, the fact you just go in and it's no. <laughs> um, Want that, to that was be. fast. Guess I'm seeing three movies tonight. <laughs> Everybody leaves angry. <laughs> Except for us, we're laughing our asses off. <laughs> just manically. 
Hell, even the fact that Nicholas Holt is the lead in this reminds you of like, you know what? I could be watching a much better chase movie that has Nicholas Holt in it. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I not watching Mad Max Fury Road right now? Well, and that's the thing about Nicholas Holt, too. It, it, it's one of those things that I kind of like Nicholas Holt. No, I do, too. Like, he's a good-looking young man. He's mm -hmm. a decent actor. But he's great as a side guy. Mm -hmm. And they keep making him leads in, like, heroic movies. And it's like, nah, just... It's cool to be the side guy, man. It's all right. Like, and in, in, in some movies, like... uh, uh when he's more so the lead, I've seen him. I've seen him do perfectly well. A, a movie like this, this is the kind of movie they would have tried putting Matthew Lillard in like twenty years ago. Like, well, appa and, I checked out the IMDb out of curiosity. Apparently, uh, the lead was originally Zac Efron for this. <laughs> that would have been inch. I like Zac Efron. That would have been interesting. Um, I, I do like Nick. I like Nicholas Holt a lot. I yeah. mean, he is. He's. Uh, what you're saying there is kind of how I felt last week when Brian and I were at Cure for Wellness, where the lead was Dane DeHaan, an, yeah. a, an actor I do really like, but I like him not, he didn't carry that movie, A Cure for Wellness, like not it at all. <laughs> uh, this, um, a movie like this, yeah, I, I'd rather see Nicholas Holt certainly in something in like a it, the, the side part he played in like Mad Max Fury Road than something yeah. like this, but but in this it was like well okay he's he's serviceable here I, I guess no he's like, fine he doesn't do anything wrong it's just and and the, the faults with it aren't his in, no by they're any not means. like his the the faults with his character aren't faults with his delivery because he does panicked and he does do that well yeah uh, he, he does he does what he's supposed to do really well it's just. Mm -hmm. Somebody with a lot more gravitas and maybe a more seasoned action person could have carried this a lot better and maybe elevated it a little more. Like, imagine, imagine like a Jason Statham in a movie like this. Like, oh that, yeah, that, but that changes the the whole idea of the movie too. It, but it's but also a quick rewrite. Could. Yeah, yeah. But also at the end too, when it turns out he's like smart and shit. It's just like that would have changed. Like that would have made more sense, you know. It's with Nicholas Holt, with with a like a Statham, or something, oh, you know, uh -huh. with a more seasoned guy, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Somebody a little bit more seasoned could have like a, in, in a for in a movie like this could have elevated it a little bit more. But I, you know, I mean, it's I this movie is going to by the time we get done reviewing this, it'll probably be out of theaters. <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> any, very true any, any final thoughts on this it was what it was yeah pretty much alright see ya